Yo friend, what is up? Levi Allen here, welcome to the Left Coast Studio. And this video right here is gonna be massive. There's so much that I'm gonna try packing into such a short period of time here. You're really not gonna wanna miss a second of it. I just got something in the mail that I'm super excited to unbox and test out for the first time. So that's what you came here for, go to this timestamp. But I, I gotta tell you, coming up is, is a world first on video on this channel, it's gonna happen. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. So if you wanna watch the unboxing, just whatever you do, come back and just watch what I'm about to share with you. A month ago, I guess, I did a video on how about, I'm, I did a video on how I'm transitioning from client-based work with Left Coast to primarily focusing on just making my own films and funding them through online products. And people had a ton of questions. One of the first questions that came up was, what type of client work do I even do? A lot of people ask that. And conveniently, I just finished one of the most exciting client projects of the year for me. So if you wanna see the type of projects I work on, go check that out in the fall. Drop a comment on their video, support them, let them know what they're doing is rad. So that's one of the client projects, but there's been a secret thing that I've been working on in the past, it feels like almost half a year now since it started. And it's related to one of the questions that I get so often, which is, which backpack do you recommend? So this right here is the first time that this bag is being on video, being shared with you. And it's from a new bag company that's launching in November called Shimoda Design. So there's, uh, there's just so much to be said, but let's just focus on the bag here and I'll tell you why I'm talking about it. In mid-November, they're launching a Kickstarter. And the reason why I'm mentioning it to you now is if you drop your email in at this website, you'll know when it launches. And that's important because in the first window, there's gonna be early bird pricing, like special early bird for the first people that purchase. And I really want you guys to get the best pricing. I've actually become an ambassador for Shimoda. I'm part of the Shimoda team. And I, I really believe in this product. I think Ian has truly done something new and innovative here. I mean, some of the things that I just really like about it right out of the gate is it's got a very modern look, but more than that, it's a very lightweight bag. It has the same internal organizing system that I've come to love from F-Stop, but it's redesigned and just done better. I wish I could just take this whole video to explain to you what I love about this bag. So there's a lot of cool things going on. There's some fantastic features, like it's got a foam pocket, it's got a mesh pocket over here, it's got an adjustable harness, it's lightweight, like I said, the material is super, super tough. It's like this rips up nylon, but it's coated so that way it doesn't absorb moisture. So it's not just fabric with a waterproof layer beneath it, but it's actually the fabric itself has waterproofing like built into it. So it wicks away moisture really well. The dirt doesn't like soak into the bag. Anyhow, do I think you should buy one? Yeah, if you're looking for a new bag, I think this is the one and, and that's what I'm, I love bags. Uh, so this is super fun for me being a part of the process of actually getting to help create some of the material behind the branding and just be a part of it has been such a joy. I'm currently packing my 60 liter. Um, I'm leaving on a trip tomorrow. So these bags are getting used heavily by me. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can over the comments and stuff like that about these bags, but make sure you follow my Instagram account and things like that because I'll be sharing more as we get closer to the actual Kickstarter. Okay, so one more quick thing here before we jump into the unboxing. This right here is the box for the Aperture 300D. I was sent it by the folks at Aperture and it's right now being my key light. I'm in love with this light. It's crazy how powerful it is. Right now I have it at 14% of full power. I used this over the weekend uh, to basically light up a whole job site that I was filming on but I'm gonna be doing videos about that in the future. So let's move into the unboxing. This is the traditional weighted stabilizer that I've been using. And I got something in the mail that is the modern version of one of these things. Let's open it up. 
Well, I can't remember the last time I've ever done any kind of unboxing on camera. In fact, this might be a left coast first. I feel like it's always appropriate to use a decently sized knife for these unboxing style videos. Uh, but let's get into this guy. Oh, the satisfying cutting of tape. I'm gonna try be as delicate in my <laughs> unboxing here. And the truth is, when the camera's off, I'm pretty aggressive when I open things. Okay, you ready? Crane two. There it is. Yeah, it, it's a box, and it's uh, and it's got a crane in it. All these tabs in the back. Okay, get into the good stuff. Got a shoulder strap of some kind. Uh, there we go. Oh hey, it's actually like a it's actually like a decent case. I hope it's not as cheap as the zippers on the DJI hard shell cases that are similar to this. It's got some, kind of looks like carbon fiber look to it. It's obviously not carbon fiber. That's a really, that's a sweet, sweet looking case. And there it is. Would you look at that? All the goodies. Charger, three batteries, the 18650s. 18650s, and here it is. Wow. The handle's thicker than I expected, actually, from looking at pictures and on the videos and all that kind of stuff. I'm assuming that this stuff, that this triggers like record on the camera and things like that. Got this foot thing over here. Screw that to the bottom there. Fold that out. This is probably how you're supposed to balance it. Oh, of course my camera angle doesn't show the full thing. Classic. The whole thing does seem to have a like fairly robust build going on here. It's got a, some joysticks, some buttony doohickeys. Let's chuck some batteries in it. Wow, look at that. Oh, that's such a satisfying sound. Whooshie! So negative. Oh, they're all the same direction. Would you look at that? So I'm hoping the process of balancing this is at least somewhat similar to a Ronin. Hopefully there's no like firmware I have to update right out of the gate. That's always super annoying. Yeah, let's go right at the precipice. <laughs> Even now I can feel this thing's probably going to weigh a bit once it's all said and done. Hey! Look at that. Do I have it set up? I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> I heard that I can just take this and point it where I want it to. Wow! Ha <laughs> ha! That's, that's actually really handy. Where you like... Oh, so it doesn't do it on that axis, but it does it on this one. That's actually super handy. I'm now just even more curious what the true weight capacity of this thing is. Like how much gear can I put on this setup? Well, unboxings are fun, but uh, let's go test this thing. I've got my small HD focus monitor right here. Uh, mounted off the bottom, off the quarter 20 thread on the bottom, and then I got this honking HDMI cable going up into the GH5 with the 12 to 35.
think it looks steady? I don't know. <laughs> you want to try to get a shot of me? James here has never held a handheld gimbal before, ever. We got the GH5, the 12 to 35, and he's just seeing if he can get a stable shot. I think he's doing okay. The main problem with lighter handheld gimbals like this one is the fact that when you're stepping, those vibrations make it into your arms. And there's no isolation on the Z axis, I think it's called. So the main issue is actually your walking. So it usually takes a little bit of while, it takes a while to get like good walking technique. But we'll see how James is doing. Okay, so I had a chance to drop some of the footage into my editing timeline. And I'm, you know, for the most part, happy with the results as a, as a starting point. I think the more I get the hang of using this type of lighter gimbal, the better I'm gonna get at using it. One thing that I spent basically the last 24 hours on tinkering with is how I'm gonna rig all of my equipment on it. Uh, but I've got some parts here going on and basically what this allows me to do is mount my monitor right here, have a second handle next to this one so it's more stable. And then off of the corner here, I put a cold shoe mount so I could mount my microphone and have the camera on top, the GH5 in cage. So that way I can go from using this handheld gimbal to break it down into my typical GH5 handheld setup and not have to basically adjust much. It should be able to just click right on, power on and go. So my initial thoughts on this are, you know, I think they've, I think they've got a winning handheld gimbal here and uh, pretty excited about using it in the field. Hey, thanks for checking out the left coast. Appreciate having you. If you enjoyed this, I don't know, do one of those things. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next one. Oh, and the videos that are coming up for me are gonna be a little bit out of order in the left coast timeline universe. Some of them are from a few weeks ago, before I even had my Shimoda bags, and everything's a little bit jumbled, but I'm really excited to get out some new videos to you. And by mid-November, we're gonna be cranking out videos. It's gonna be awesome. I'm, I'm really pumped about that because, because I enjoy this. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Check you in the next one. Remember, life's better when you make stuff. <laughs>